Um, do you all create NFTs of your own? Correct. I generally create NFTs on the Wax blockchain um, because the transaction fees are almost nil and I've been using their platform for about three or four years. Um, and I'm a verified artist on one of their platforms. So I can actually like, like what I want to do is, is, is blend NFTs. So like potentially you can, you know, let's say you attend a guest pass popcorn, you could get a popcorn bucket as like, uh, the NFT, and then you would blend the po apps you get and level up your bucket of popcorn or, you know, whatever the, your, you know, whatever it is. So like in book club, I want to give people like bookworm PFPs. And then when they attend book clubs and contribute to book clubs, then they can get, you know, po apps essentially that they can blend in and then level up their bookworm. I see. Well, what's this blockchain again? Wax blockchain. Lex. Okay, this is my first time hearing it. How do I spell it? Yeah. Um, there are a lot of blockchains. You can check out Solana, Solana as well for cheap fees. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really... Um, sorry? And high speed, like... Pretty fast blockchain as well as cheap. Okay, I, I, I don't really, uh, I don't really understand Solana, but from my very limited understanding, I think they are still quite. Um, there, there are some issues with them, right? In terms of uh, centralization and the people holding, uh, a small group of people holding like the majority of the, yeah, the currency. Well, Solana yeah. is. Solana is not around for a long time and it's still in beta. So, and it's the fastest growing blockchain, like without a doubt. And uh, validators mm -hmm. are like, in, also in terms of validators, it's the fastest growing. So, yeah, it's it's still young. And, and let's see, like many are concerned about centralization. But uh, if it continues like this uh, and validators get added like on a frequent basis, um, like the number changes significantly every week, then like there's a high chance of Solana like <laughs> literally surviving and being a really an important blockchain moving forward. I'm just like concerned about their data history because they're using our weave to store the data because it's proof of history. That's kind of a um, yeah, and, and 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 how should I say? It's a proof of stake blockchain, but it works on the proof of history consensus. And there's a lot of data which has to be stored in case to be a validator. And as I said, they're using our weave. So they are kind of dependent on other blockchains to store their data for their success. Um, but let's see, like there are flaws in every single blockchain. Like we have a TN Ethereum yeah. and the most popular one are the gas fees, but also that's because of the high network demand. And uh, the transitions mm. should be solving a lot of these problems. Um, but let's see. Yep. Mm. All right. Well, we can get started. Um, welcome to Guest Pass Live Check. Um, basically, this is just a, you know, like an hour of time every couple weeks, um, alternating weeks from the level two vibe check. And it's just a space to try to build community within guest passers and, um, you know, answer any questions that guest passers may have or share any experience amongst guest passers that we can learn from or get inspiration from. And sometimes we have a lot of people, sometimes it's just one or two people. Um, but essentially, yeah. what we, how we start is we just kind of do a quick little two minute check-in and just kind of introduce yourself. And, you know, if you wanna share something that's inspired you over the past two weeks or since you've joined the DAO, or um, if you have any questions, 
um, I'll, I'll type them into the notes. And then after everybody's given a kind of check-in, then it's just a, a open floor and, you know, answer questions, learn from each other or leave early, you know, kind of just up to everybody. And at the end of the um, notion for today, which is posted in the water cooler chat, is um, the agenda. And at the end of the agenda is a form um, for claiming a PO app. Essentially, it'll send me your Discord handle, and then I'll DM you um, a link to the poapp.xyz site to claim your poapp. So with that started, I'll just start with uh, my check-in real quick, and then we'll go to Sergio, and then Sanad, and then L33. Or <laughs> Does that sound good for everybody? Sounds good. All right. Great. Um, nice. Yeah. Sweet. Um, my name is Ernest of Gaia. I've been in the uh, Bankless DAO since September. Uh, I started out as a level one, um, became a level two, and then moved all my liquidity to Polygon. And so I became a guest passer. <laughs> And so I've just been having a lot of fun uh, helping other guest passers, spending time with people, learning some of the DAO tools, and you know, just getting a lot of inspiration from new people coming into the DAO. So with that, I'll pop it over to Sergio. Thank you, thank you. So I'm Sergio Ariza from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I joined Bankless DAO back in December 2021, yeah, like the first week of December, uh, it was amazing. I started um, spending time in the marketing guild, but then holidays came in and I needed a break. So I took a long break, uh, three weeks of December and the whole month of January. And here I am. Uh, I'm a nerd. I uh, really like sci-fi. Uh, and I really enjoy just reading and, and, you know, embedding myself to anything related to technology. So it's not a surprise that blockchain and crypto, um, it's like my new foundation uh, at my 26 years old. So, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Thank you, Sergio. I'm just going to continue. I'm Senat. Um, and uh, I'm from Austria, and uh, I have as well uh, just recently joined the DAO at the start of January. Actually, it was the last week of December, but I haven't done anything except of entering the DAO, <laughs> um, but started contributing or finding ways to contribute at the start of January. have been one month until then right now, <laughs> so the time went by pretty fast. Um, I started with uh, crypto and everything, educating myself about blockchain about eight months ago. And since then, it has been a unique journey. And I've luckily stumbled across this DAO and got to know about how DAO work. Um, still learning, of course, as we all do. Um, and one of the best experiences here in the last couple of weeks was just meeting all these people from different places, different countries, different cultures, um, talking to them, talking with them, learning from them. Um, people like Ernest, uh, uh, which I really admire, and other people from the um, research guild, which I started contributing um, heavily now. Like my main focus is here in the research guild. Um, that also has been part of my learning curve I started. <laughs> I wanted to participate in more guilds as um, I was interested in doing more stuff, but it was too overwhelming and there was too much going on. So I thought uh, at least for season three, I'm just going to focus um, on one particular guild where I feel the most comfort, I would say, uh, where I know the people already and that has been the research guild. And I'm 
kind of confident with the decision and I'm glad to be here, glad to be in the vibe check. And yeah, that's basically it. And I'm going to pass the mic to L33. Thank you. Hello, hello. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for answering my questions just now, Sinead. Um, um, L33, um, you can call me Lance. Um, I am from Singapore. I joined the DAO, I think, earlier this year, uh, in January as well. I uh, got into, got to know of this entire like Web3 space uh, last year, I think last November or December, um, through NFTs. So I am currently focusing on the writers and the AV guild because I thought it would be better for me to focus instead of being overwhelmed. Um, still learning, still learning, uh, trying to see how I can contribute as well in different areas. And yeah, that's all. Thank you. All right. Well, thank all of you. Um, thanks for checking in. Does anybody have, uh, we can just open the floor up now. Um, you know, if you have something to do, feel free to leave if it gets boring um, or, you know, but if you have any questions um, or, you know, want to share anything in particular, um, you know, feel free to, to jump in. <laughs> yeah, I have a, a couple of questions for you, Ernest. Because you mentioned that you joined the DAO as an L1 and then you become an L2. And, and, and I was wondering if you could talk to us a bit about your journey or how to move from a sporadic contributor to an L1 and then to an L2. Sure, no problem. Um, so is everybody familiar with the Bankless Community Forum? I think not. All right. Well, if, if you, you ever run out of things to catch up on in the Discord, um, let me share in the water cooler chat. So the forum is where a lot of the discussions um, around proposals or like big projects that really take, you know, wide DAO input. Um, we use the discourse forum um, to to discuss those things. Um, you can also kind of vote on things and show, you know, consensus for for uh, you know different votes or you know people's different questions. And so one of the forum posts in here is the. Let me see if I can find it real quick. But essentially, membership levels um, discussion, and yeah, here we go. I think I found it. Do do do. Is everybody able to open that, or um, Sanad can probably yeah, can... check in the forum. Okay, I can show my screen too, if anybody can't see it. However, I can share it to like, just okay. yeah. try it if it doesn't work. Or... Yeah, no, go ahead. Thanks. That'd be a huge help, Sanad, if you could just kind of right. go to that forum page, just in case. Um, the discussion but... on membership? Yeah, so currently there's a discussion on the membership levels within the DAO. And... Currently, you know, if, if you have one bank token, you're a member of the DAO. You can actually vote in Snapshot. You can communicate in the forums. You can communicate in the Discord. Um, and so when we're talking about membership levels, to some extent, we're really just talking about Discord permissions. And so 
if you have one bank, you have access to, you know, all the discussions around development and governance. When you get 35,000 bank in on the ETH mainnet in your MetaMask or um, other wallet that you can connect via collab.land bot in Discord, then you become a, a currently a level one member. And what this means is that you get additional social benefits for holding on to that 35,000 bank. So you don't have to pay anybody 35,000 bank when you get it to become a level one. You just, we can verify in your wallet that you have 35,000 bank and then you go from um, a blue, you know, guest pass profile in Discord to a yellow level one. And some of the social benefits that open up are um, channels, like some social channels, um, NFT club, a uh, couple other things. Um, one of the other things that can happen when you have 35,000 bank is so like CityDAO is doing an airdrop to bankless members that have over 35,000 bank. You know, so this is, you know, a, a financial social benefit that another organization is giving to bank members, um, you know, with the hopes that we develop a long-term relationship with Citadel. And Hexarchia is a, a, a metaverse game or a game with its own little kind of metaverse. Um, it's kind of like a weird version of chess, but essentially they gave bankless members that were level one that were holding 35,000 bank um, early access to their game right so the other thing within the DAO that happens is that you get access to the level one coordinate so the the guest pass coordinate and I can go into coordinate because um, it's really important um, that all of you understand that because it's we're going to start having coordinates over the next couple weeks. Um, but the guest pass coordinate each season is 250,000 bank, I think. Um, and the level one coordinate is twice that. And then the level two coordinate is the same as the level one coordinate. And so when you're a level one and you've saved up 35,000 bank or, or you purchased it um, and you start contributing, level twos nominate level ones to level two status. And instead of being a yellow Discord profile, you become kind of like an orange Discord profile. And then what the level two status means, it gives you admin privileges to Discord. So you can pin messages, you can um, help people with roles or managing their Discord channels. Um, and so you don't get any extra governance um, or even any extra really like social channels or any benefits. People could offer level two members you know, um, benefits, but usually they just offer them to level one. Um, the level two is just more of like active contributor that has admin privileges. And then if you hold over 150,000 bank, um, you're considered a level three and, and that's considered a whale. And there's no, no other benefits to those people other than that they're just kind of uh, they again get a different color in the discord and it just recognizes the whale for holding you know onto the bank token and you can put your 35,000 bank on the ETH mainnet um, 
into like sushi swap or balancer and as long as your bank is on the eth mainnet your voting power um is determined by the number of tokens bank tokens that you have so while you can vote with one bank and you're you know technically a member of the dao despite you know your membership level in discord um but somebody with a hundred thousand bank tokens their weight in voting is going to be more than if you just had one token but the ability to participate and create proposals is the same whether you got one bank or you know one million bank the proposal i believe um and this isn't the only post on this topic in the discourse forum but I believe the proposal that folks are discussing will kind of change the level one requirement to like 10,000 bank. Um, just kind of reward and incentivize and recognize guest passers as contributors. Um, you know, once you've done some things and you've earned 10,000 bank, you know, that's, we want as many people as possible, you know, to contribute and become members and you know to be recognized but i don't know what the discussions are for like the other levels um that they're considering the main thing is though that you're recognized as a level one member with ten thousand bank so potentially you know other groups could offer you know Citadel could offer level one members at 10,000 banks, Citadel airdrop, you know, if they wanted to. Anything about that? Any questions? Does that make sense? No, that was clear. Okay. Yeah. I think coordinate, it, it's like my, my, my question right now, like what is it and, and what's that about, basically, yeah. Yep. Um, let me get some coordinate resources real quick. Um, Should I go to coordinate? Who? Well, so in Bankless, um, we have a section called How To Guides in our main wiki. And on this page, is a, a guide on how bankless uses coordinate um, and then it describes the level you know the guest pass the level one the level two coordinate and i can pull up have you uh filled out your profile synod at all on coordinate yet yeah, I, I, oh, no, I haven't. I think I've just like connected my wallet to coordinate. Okay. So Perhaps that's. Yeah. And uh, we got two new people that showed up too. Um, so before I carry on with coordinate, um, would Monica uh, and Dushant, um, we just started out the vibe check with a brief introduction and then we've just opened the floor for questions and previous question was about the membership level levels within discord and the DAO, and the current question that i was getting ready to start answering was about coordinate would you two care to give an introduction and you know if you have any questions you can ask those and i'll write them down and add them to the list And going once, that's okay. Feel free um, if you're having any audio issues to go ahead and, you know, type it in the water cooler chat 
that is the uh, um, chat that we're currently using right now for text chat. And I am just getting connected to the coordinate site. And holy shit, did I disappear for a minute? No, all good. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see. All right. So. All right, I'll go ahead and show my screen on the coordinate. Do, do, do. Does everybody see the coordinate screen? Yes, yep. it's loading. Yes. Yep, there you go. Okay. Um, so, when you set up your profile, um, if you click on your profile, you have a profile that you can kind of describe yourself. The way Coordinate works is it allows peer-to-peer -peer review of each other's work. And so the the DAO and guilds, um, so AV Guild currently has a form um, that if you're in the AV Guild or you've been, you know, going to meetings and trying to learn about the AV Guild, then you should fill out this form and you will get added to the AV Guild coordinate. And the way it works is that the DAO puts in, what I say, 250,000, I think, uh, over the season or uh, for the guest pass um, coordinate. And the coordinate works really well for rewarding folks who have contributed to things outside of like what folks get paid to do so if you're a role holder um and you're getting paid to do things the coordinate can maybe show some extra appreciation um but it's more for you know the work that people do month to month that's you know n not in people's like straight budgets you know just kind of ad hoc work as we're developing, as folks are coming up with ideas. And there's, there's a pool of bank, and then there's a, a pool of people. And the people will have like, you know, four to seven days to sign up at, for the coordinate. And once it starts, it begins an epic. And, and then you'll have like five days to allocate um, give tokens to the people that you've worked with. So for guest passers and the guest pass coordinate, we start out with zero give tokens, but level ones and level twos are given give tokens, like a hundred or a thousand, depending on the coordinate. And then the level ones and level twos distribute those give tokens to the guest passers. And if there was a thousand bank in the pool and at the end of the epic amongst the guest passers, you know, there was a total of a thousand tokens, then each give token that you have would be worth one bank. And however many give tokens you were given from all the level ones and twos, you know, that's how much bank you have. Um, if you're in a guild coordinate, there's no distinction between whether you're a guest passer, level one, or level two. So the way it starts out is that everybody 
that signs up would get 100 give tokens. Um, and then you essentially give those give tokens to the people that you've worked with or that you've seen doing work. Um, and then those people give you tokens, you know, people that you've been working with. And those are the ones that you keep. So first you're given give tokens. You're supposed to give those away. But then the give tokens that other people give you, you get to keep. And then the give tokens will be worth a certain amount of bank, depending on the number of people and the amount of bank in the pool. What may happen is that somebody could forget to sign up to coordinate or for whatever reason, um, they don't allocate all their give tokens. So if you keep any of the give tokens that you're initially given, those get burned. So that means if you had 1,000 bank and started out with 1,000 give tokens, but 100 of those give tokens got burned, then that 1,000 bank would be divided up between 900 give tokens. And so each give token would be worth just slightly more than one bank. And one of the things you can do in the map is it kind of shows you, you know, how people are distributing bank. So instead of being like having a bunch of bosses that decide these are the people and this is how much they get paid and this is the work that has to be done, uh, Coordinate allows for a budget, right? We know we want to spend 250000 each time period um, for the work that guest passers do. None of us want to like, you know, micromanage all this stuff. So it's just easier to allocate, give to people that are, you know, because you have to, if you don't sign up, then, you know, all the people that sign up are active members. And so each month you have to sign up for these coordinates. And so if you already know people are motivated enough to sign up, then, you know, they've done some kind of contributions they've worked with people and so the idea is that you know we allow each other to pay people for the work that we see folks doing um when a coordinate starts up so you'll see you know the av guild you know is, is about 20 people but same thing you can see on the last coordinate, you know, who the green is, is the people that have, you know, how they've distributed their tokens. The orange is, you know, the tokens that have been distributed to them. Um, and when it starts out, so you'll, at the top, it says allocate and map. So once you fill out your profile, and the epic starts, then you go to allocate. And this first little text box for each coordinate, you want to fill it out and describe the things that you've done, your contributions for, you know, since the last coordinate. And, you know, contributions are attending meetings, reading notions, you know, um, all the learning, you know, especially as a guest passer, you know, just the learning and reading and observing, um, that's all contributions. And, you know, I would encourage folks to, you know, as much as possible, you know, fill in on their profile what they've been trying to do. You know, um, sometimes guest passers feel like they haven't been contributing just trying to figure things out <laughs> is a huge contribution. Um, and, you know, sharing your frictions in things um, or asking questions when things are unclear, you know, all this is kind of contributions, especially guest passers that you can include here.
And then you have an option to opt out of the coordinate um, also. You know, so if you're a role holder in a guild coordinate, you might opt out because you're getting paid to do work. Um, and then once you have your profile filled out and the epic, you know, has started, you'll then be able, you'll have a given amount of give to give out to people and you'll move to the allocate give tab which i can't do yet because this hasn't started yet you know they're filling out the forms over the next few days for the av guild are there any that's amazing right it's a lot of fun and um i really like coordinate i earn most of my income off of coordinate and in other DAOs we do coordinates weekly and that's really interesting because um, we actually have like several small groups and it's an easy way to like check in and be like oh crap I haven't done anything this week I'll opt out or I'll opt in because I did some things and then every week the uh, coordinate just kind of kicks off. Several months ago, you know, we might go two or three months without a coordinate. Um, and so last season they started doing it every month. And so we should start seeing the impact of that this season, just people being able to contribute with a little bit more security, you know, and understanding with how what us incentives are available in the DAO? I actually got a question, Ernest. Mm -hmm. um, since I've received um, gift tokens from the last edition and from the last epoch, um, and they are still there in my account, um, and because I'm still a gas person, and not an L1, I cannot um, distribute them. So what does happen to those gift tokens that I got? Um, um, the, when the next coordinate starts, so I can show you. So I actually, Marketing Guild is, is starting their first um, coordinate this season. Um, and so when you have admin privileges to a coordinate, you essentially, um, can set the time for when, you know, the Epic is. So we have like four or five days usually that you have to sign up for the coordinate. And then after that sign up period, the Epic will start. And when it closes, that will stay in your balance. You know, it'll show until the next coordinate starts. Does that make sense? So right now it says that you have tokens in there and that's really what you were just given last time. When the guest passer coordinate starts, that'll refresh, you know, or All right. does that make sense? Yeah, the yeah, of course. If it's going to refresh, then it makes sense. Like, I didn't know if it, if they were staying like here in my wallet, and uh, or if they are going to be refreshed as soon as the next allocation starts. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So, yeah. So, see, I think so. I had. Um, I'm going to change these dates a little bit. But you can essentially, the way this Marketing Guild one is set up, and we'll just be starting to distribute our um, forms tomorrow. Um, maybe today, but mostly early, early tomorrow. And when I go to allocate, you can see on you know the first tab, I can fill in my description of the work that I've done, and I can save that but the epic begins in four days. So in four days, I will be able to select my team 
and then I will be given give and I'll be able to allocate it. And selecting your team um, essentially like with the you know the guest pass coordinate has all these you know has a hundred people in it right and obviously you don't work or maybe you know most people don't work with a hundred people so when you're given the list of a hundred guest passers you'll have an opportunity to select your team and you'll just select the people that you recognize you know from that and the guest pass coordinate it doesn't really matter that you select your team because you're not giving out any tokens you're just getting them but in the guilds you know where you have like 30 maybe 60 people in the dev guild that's in the coordinate you know you'll kind of select your team of you know maybe five to ten people that you've worked with and then you just allocate your give amongst the people that you've selected to be part of your team so that you're not you don't have to scroll through 30 different people you can if you want um, and select everybody to be part of your team or you can just select people that you worked with and then when you allocate give you'll essentially just select it to those people but this obviously does just count for l1s and above right well guest passers we have a guest pass coordinate that we sign up for but there's also the guilds your whether your guest pass or a level doesn't matter mm -hmm. okay right it's okay. just yeah it's just you're in the guild you know if you're active in the guild you won't miss the coordinate you know because you're keeping up on the chat if you're keeping up on the chat you should sign up you know if that's all you're doing you know feel free to that's still a contribution right and I've seen people kind of lurk for two or three months and you know then they come back and they contribute to a discussion and it was amazing and it's like that person better sign up for coordinate this season right because I want to reward them because even though they've been you know working or observing an hour a week you know that long-term perspective was super valuable you know in a discussion and was a huge contribution I have a question. So I actually right. signed up for uh, Coordinate via the AV Guild, but what I'm seeing on the Coordinate uh, screen is actually blank, like an empty screen. Yes. Would you like to share your screen real quick? Okay, give me a moment. Oh, and we got a bunch of new people too. Welcome, everybody. And I'll do a quick little time check um, while you're trying to share your screen. Uh, so this event will be over in about seven minutes. Um, there will be a recording of this posted in the water cooler chat. Um, but, and I have notes and agenda for the let me find it for this vibe check i'll post it in the water cooler chat now do you see my screen it's loading right now okay So click the top right, those three little bars. Okay. Hmm. Do, do you see it? Um. Yeah. And, and like in your URL, <clears throat> I might just try deleting the word epic and just try app.coordinate.com. Okay. Epic? No, just remove that epic part. So just app.coordinate.com. Yeah. Oh, okay. And see if that does. 
Yeah. Yeah, it shows this. So. Yep. So currently, um, you, this means so the AV Guild will collect addresses, and then they'll enter in all those addresses, and then they'll start the epic. So. If you go back to AV Guild to read, um, I think it was True Cat's post or somebody, um, she has a date that the epic starts, and on that day, this page will look different. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And you want to okay. make, you just want to make sure that your MetaMask is, you're logged in to the same public address account that you, you know, signed up with in AV Guild. Does that make okay, sense? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. And does anything happen when you and then, click the three bars on the right, the top right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so profile. So you're, when you get entered into a circle, it'll show up underneath those. Um, you know, but you can, or maybe you can, you should be able to, you know, you can change, update your profile and, you know, you can, um, you'll be given a text box where you can kind of like describe yourself or, you know, how you want to contribute to the DAO. When people... That's after I've been... Add it into the circle, right? Yeah, I don't know why it's not letting you go to your profile or update your profile, but we'll definitely, as soon as this coordinate starts, you know, as soon as the epic starts, um, yeah, just uh, reach out to me or, you know, anybody in AV Guild if you have any questions. Okay. Sure. And for the guild, uh, no, for the downwide coordinate, it's we have to sign up via the bots command uh, form, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and okay. in the announcements channel, so the announcements channel at the top of the Discord is the the one channel to rule them all. Um, any announcement uh, that's pertinent you know, two members, you know, that's real important will be in that announcements channel. And so before the form, you know, they'll, they'll mention coordinates coming. They'll post the form in there or the instructions on, you know, how to use the bot to go to the form. So if you uh, make sure that you check the announcements every three days, you should never miss a coordinate for the for the DAO, and then the guild coordinates are in in the guilds. I see. Okay, this is helpful. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you. I will stop streaming now. All right. Well, and we have two minutes left, um, and then this will be an open forum. You all are free to hang out if you would like. Does anybody have any, like, burning questions? And I can um, write these down, and then, you know, Sanad might know the answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A lot of people have attended since we started. Welcome to you all. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Feel free to, uh, you know, come back to the next one. It's every two weeks. If you have any questions, you know, you can talk amongst yourselves or drop your questions into the water cooler chat. We do record these sessions. Um, there is a form to claim your PO app at the end of the Notion agenda. And, um, yeah, excited to see everybody. Hope to see you again. And I hope everybody has a good day. Thank you so much, Ernest. Uh, it was super helpful and, and 
you explained everything really, really spot on. So 